Hey everybody, welcome back to another Deck Profile Friday. So this one here, you know, I thought I'd go, uh, you know, a different route rather than, you know, just the usual Deck Profile Friday. And being as that this one here is the last one of 2023. I thought, you know, I would go with, you know, a Deck Profile Friday based on the question of, Hey, Will, and yes, by the way, my name is Will, for those that don't know. Hey, Will, what deck did you enjoy playing the most in 2023? All right, and I think I'm going to go, you know, do that, you know, here on out, you know, um, talk about the deck that, you know, I really enjoyed the most playing in that that year as the last deck profile of the year. So so the question is is hey Will, what deck did you enjoy playing the most in 2023? And you know, to be honest, there's really only one deck that I enjoyed playing uh and it's because it's the last time that uh, you know I got to use it, right? And you know, back when I got back into Pokémon again, you know, this was the uh, the deck that I, you know, started playing, right? I played it just because I liked it, um, because of the HP, the damage potential, how cheap the energy was, right? It just did a lot, right? Even though it was a three-prize Pokemon, it just did a lot. And, you know, I've thoroughly enjoyed playing this deck, and I even still have it in the original list. That I played in a tournament uh, this year, right? Still in the same sleeves, still in the same cards as I'm just gonna just retire it like that, right? And um, you know the the deck that uh, you know I'm talking about is the uh, you know the main Pokemon. You know is featured in Sword and Shield, and it was the uh, the final boss. You know, it was the one that gave. You know, Galar, it's darkest days. So, it is none other than Eternatus. This is my favorite deck um, of the year. I love playing this thing. I got back into it after seeing, like I said, the HP at 340. The damage potential with Dread End. And just the energy cost on it as well. So, all for just getting more Pokemon into play and... You know, um, doing some dark type shenanigans, right? So, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the deck profile. So, for Eternatus, we play three of the VMAX. And then three of the V. This is literally the main card of the deck, not the focus on it. Uh, you know, on the early game, right, it's more of a mid to late game card, but I guess it depends on the situation, right? You know, you can definitely run into um, scenarios where this would be, uh, you know, the main card early in the game, right? If you need to go more of an aggressive option, right? Keep in mind, the format at the time was Sword and Shield on, Going all the way up to, uh, pardon me, Crown Zenith. That was the last set that this was played in, right? It wasn't played with Scarlet and Violet as they had their rotation to battle styles onwards when Scarlet and Violet came out. So it was uh, Sword and Shield onwards to um, Crown Zenith. And then it was played before that too, right? Um I think it was still like a, like a sword and shield on uh, type of format for, um, you know, like the worlds of 2022, right? I think it was sword and shield onwards to that. And I still thought it was still a pretty decent play. So it's just something that I just played, you know, throw its, uh, you know, history in the game here. Um, yeah, so the VMAX, we got 340 HP, 3 retreat, no resistance, weakness to fighting, eternal zone, its ability, 
um, allows you to have up to eight Pokemon in play on your bench, but they all must be dark. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty cool, and you need that for its attack, right? Because its attack dread ends for a dark and colorless. There's 30 for each uh, dark-type Pokemon in play, including itself, right? So if you could have a max of 9 in play, 1 active, 8 on bench, that'll do 270 damage for only 2 energies, and that's absolutely huge. The V there, you know, 220 HP, 2 retreat, no resistance, weakness to fighting. So same thing, just one less uh, retreat cost. Um, power Accelerator, which is another decent attack, 30. Uh, attach a Dark Energy from your discard to one of your bench Pokemon. And then Dynamax Cannon, which you probably won't even use because it's too costly. Right, it does 120 plus 120 more damage if uh, the opponent's active is a v max pretty cool so that is the main attacker of the deck uh for the mid and late game the early game you want to use these we got galarian wheezing and coughing right typically early game you want to start off with that coughing and you want to ascension so you get that second turn wheezing, right? That's what it's about. 60 HP, weakness to fighting, uh, we, uh, resistance to nothing, retreat cost of one. Um, goes up to Galarian wheezing, where it's got three retreat, no resistance, and weakness to fighting as well at 130 HP. Um, its ability there, neutralizing gas, as long as this Pokemon is in your active spot. Your opponent's Pokemon in play have no abilities except for neutralizing gas. So this is absolutely huge as the biggest enemy in the format was Lugia V-Star, right? Uh, and it's a summoning star ability. It had, um, you know, uh, Luminion V's luminous sign, right? And the, the uh, Radiant, Charizard, uh, Radiant Charizard's ability, the variety of the Lost Zone decks. You know, Comfies, uh, Cramorant, you know, Greninja, Radiant Greninja, and Concealed Cards as well, right? It shuts them down. And then Severe Poison there for a Dark. Uh, your opponent's act is now poisoned. And then put a Damage Counter, put, pardon me, four Damage Counters instead of one on that Pokemon uh, during Pokemon Checkup, which happens in between turns. So... You know, in between turns when they're still poisoned, they take 40 damage, which is really good. It adds up really quick. And that is the early game attacker. So next on to the support Pokemon. We got four Crobat V, right? Pretty good card there. Two Galarian Zigzagoon. One Drapion V, and then one Radiant Sneasler, Hisuian Sneasler. So these four, right? So Crobat V, um, so they're all Dark type, obviously. 180 HP, one Retreat, no Resistance, Weakness to Fighting. It's Ability there, Dark Asset. Um, draw cards until you have six into your hand. And then it's attack their Venomous Fang for a Dark and Colorless, the 70. And your opponent's active is now Poison. So not too terrible at all. Next, we got Galarian Zigzagoon there at 70 HP. Uh, retreat cost of one, resistance to nothing, weakness to grass this time. Um, it's ability there, Headbutt Tantrum when it comes into play. Onto your bench, you may put one damage counter on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So that's pretty good to get those, um, you know, get that knockout right with that and Dread End, right? Get that 280 mark, knock out the, you know, that Giratina V-Star, that Lugia V-Star, etc. And then Surprise Attack for Dark Cutlass does 30, Flip Coin of Tails does nothing. So whatever, right? Next, the Drapion V, you know, 210 HP, 
Uh, two retreat, no uh, resistance, weakness to fighting, wild style there. Um, the attacks of this Pokemon's attack cost. Pardon me, this Pokemon's attack cost is a colorless last for each of your opponent's single strike, rapid strike, and fusion strike Pokemon in play. So that's really good. And then Dynamic Tail there does 190. Uh, this attack does 60 damage to one of your Pokemon for four colorless. Uh, it's in there because it's a Mew VMAX counter. You know, as if we need it because we're all dark, right? But it just, you know, provides that instant KO option, right? And that's kind of what we need as they were a super aggressive and fast deck. And then lastly, Radiant, Hisui, and Sneasler, 130 HP, one retreat, no resistance, weakness to fighting. Uh, it's ability there. Um, I'm sorry, just a little bit hard to read at this angle. Poison Peak, right? Uh, so during Pokemon checkup, put two more damage counters on your opponent's Poison Pokemon. So with, you know, Galarian Weezing's attack there, right? You know, instead of, you know, Severe Poison, instead of it doing four in between turns, it'll do six now, which just adds up a lot quicker, you know, and roughly, like, you know, in two turns... You'll have done 240 damage, which knocks out a lot of Pokemon. And then Poison Jab there for a Dark and two Colors does 90. Your opponent's active is now Poison. So just a decent single prize option if you need to get an attack. And that is it for the Pokemon, everybody. So that is the Eternus Pokemon lineup. Trainer cards, right? We want them to be as disruptive as possible. So we play for Marnie, right? Think of Galarian Weezing as Path of the Peak. We play three Judge. Two Bosses Orders. These are the supporters. One's Serena. And then Triple Temple of Sinnoh, right? This is an absolute Lugia counter, right? At the time, it was the best deck. And it still is a pretty good deck in today, this today's day and age of Pokemon. Marnie, both shuffle, put it on the bottom. Uh, and then uh, you draw five, your opponent draws four. Judge, both shuffle, draw four. Uh, boss, you know, Gus, whatever you want. Serena is great for two reasons. It's a Gus card like Boss for Pokemon V. And you can discard cards from your hand. So it allows you to draw more with that Crobat V if possible. And then Temple of Sinnoh, right? It just makes all special energies a colorless energy, which is really good. You know, being able to negate a V-Guard energy or a um, powerful colorless energy or, you know, a twin energy, capture energy, right? It does all of that. And those are all used in this format, so... Really good. That is the supporter lineup. So next we're going to go to the trainer lineup. Right? The trainer cards. For consistency. Max consistency. We play four quick ball. Four ultra ball. We want to make sure we get that, you know, turn one wheezing. Right? Or turn two wheezing. If we go first. Two dark patch. Uh, get that energy back from the discard pile. So this searches out basics. This searches out any. Uh, quick ball discards one. Ultra ball discards two. Attach a dark energy from your discard pile to one of your bench dark Pokemon. Two four seal stone. Right? It's a V-star power. We search our deck for any card and put it into our hands. You know, I did have, you know, one point in here. Uh, Hisuian Samurott V-Star, right? Just for the, uh, you know, its ability to put four somewhere. That's not too bad, but this, is, I think, is a lot, a lot better because it makes it more consistent. And some people tried Drapion V-Star as well with the, uh, the extra poison. We got two switch, 
right? So, you know, it makes it easy to switch. A big parasol. So big parasol was there uh, mainly for, I believe it was Giratina uh, V-Star. It's Star uh, Requiem attack and uh, amazing rare evil toll. Uh, it's amazing destruction, right? To prevent the auto KO on our three prize Pokemon. Boost Shake. So if we go first and it's turn one, right? We can play this. And then that allows us to evolve our coughing into wheezing on turn one and then going into our opponent's first turn of the game they can't use abilities so that's absolutely huge and a choice belt right uh 30 damage uh to your opponent's active so pretty good and then lastly we got our energy cards so our energy cards are pretty easy we play seven darks and then two hiding i like them because they give us free retreat so and there we go everybody this is my favorite deck of the year eternus v max with wheezing there love this deck and uh just wanted to say thank you so much for the support this year i really appreciate it and uh you know hope hope to uh you know um come out uh you know right out of the gate in 2024 with a lot more content and yeah obviously you know don't forget to you know the usual uh, like comment subscribe and then we got uh, that giveaway as well once we get to 250 subscribers so can we get there all right so there you go thank you so much for watching everybody and once again see you in the next video.